guys. Um, welcome, 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 I guess. My name is Luna Scar, and today I will not be doing a cover, but I will be talking about my upcoming album. Yay. Yeah, it's been very exciting, and um, I'm finally ready to share with you guys my process. So, in true me fashion, I had to do this on the webcam and just talk about what's happening. So, here I am. You know, upgraded system. I know how to stabilize a camera now. I'll look much better. <laughs> but I am here. This album is super important, and um, I don't know. It's very overwhelming to finally share. So... Long story short, this album is a collection of my life for the last, like, two or three years, maybe. Um, more so, like, 2018. So, essentially, what I'm trying to do is put together a comparison between three things. Um, sex, self-harm, and music. There are three things that typically you wouldn't really relate with one another, um, but they actually, at least in my life, they all are the same thing and they all coincide. I came up with this concept, um, you know, I had written a couple of the songs already and, you know, done all of that, but I didn't really know what the cohesive theme was going to be. I didn't really know how I was going to put everything together. Sorry, my hair is like doing the most right now. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sure what like the cohesive theme was going to be. And one day I was just like in a mood and I sat on my bed on like the notes app on my phone and I decided to just like make a Venn diagram. And I thought to myself, sex and self-harm are almost like the same thing. They provide just sensation. And on a literal level, of course, that's not true. But nevertheless, I was like, all right, um, they both provide a sensation. And then I thought, sex and music both provide passion. And music and self-harm both provide release. Sorry. They both provide, well, actually, that's true. They both provide relief is what I meant to say, but that's also true. They both provide release. And then all together, you tie them all up. And all three of those things share the fact that they all give me power. They make me feel in control, like I can do something, like I have a say in something. Um, and so the album's kind of split up more so into two pieces. Um, it's more so split into, like, the sex portion and then the self-harm portion. And then, obviously, music is the whole thing. It's 13 songs, because I decided 13 was my lucky number. Originally, I had 12, and I was like, I'm sorry, there needs to be one more, because I just feel like that's the number. I don't know, I, I feel like it that way. And I also realized Sober was also 13 songs, which just felt natural, so I wanted to make sure I had that one extra song. And then I ended up writing two songs that were, like, perfect for the for the, for the the album, and I was like, all right, one of these got to get the boot, because I'm not having 14. So, 13 songs, um, and... The very first song, actually, well, not the first song, like, in order, but the very first song that I wrote for it was supposed to be on Sober. <laughs> so that's, you know, a little bit where it started. I wrote it in the time period of Sober. It was supposed to be, uh, like, a deluxe track on Sober. And I even made, like, the, the, the track list, you know, picture and everything with the name of that song. It's called The Pool. It was supposed to be on Sober. It's probably one of my favorite lyrical pieces. It's, um, you know, still very relatable now. I'm like, damn, I wrote this when I was, like, 14 or 15. Like, not 14, yeah. I wrote this when I was 14, and I still feel pretty much the same. So it's kind of crazy how time transcends like that, and things don't change too much like you would think they do. And then the very last song was written in November of 2019 when I told myself the track list was done. And I wrote this, and I was like, I'm sorry. This is, this is getting on there. Like, there's no choice. That's happening. <coughs> So that's that. Um, and I produced everything myself, per usual. I perform everything myself. I write everything myself. Um, I have an engineer. His name is Kevon, and he is amazing. He is great. He's the reason all my songs are magic. Um, that's all his doing, because engineering and like mastering, mixing, all that stuff, I've tried it. It's too hard. I personally cannot. Yeah, I, this is not, it's not something I can do. So yeah, he um, he puts together all the, the finishing touches and makes everything sound perfect and do all the work. Um, so yeah, you have all those songs um, put together, and it's weird because I produced all of these, like most of these songs, when in school. Like I wasn't doing anything in my senior year of high school. Jump now, just rewind because when I was doing sober, I was like 14, 15. I am 18, almost 19 now. So that's where we are now. 
Um, I produced most of these in my senior year of high school. Um, I wasn't doing shit in any of my classes. Um, you know, I was already, like, past my credits and whatever. And so I sat in my class every single day. I brought my computer, and I brought my little MIDI keyboard, and I would sit in the corner of the room, had nobody bother me, nobody talked to me, and I would do what I had to do. All of the pieces, or most of them, were actually, like, produced when I was in school, which is really fucking crazy. And I do it all in GarageBand. A lot of people will ask me. I used to do it on my phone. Like, I had the GarageBand app. And that's how I did all of Garden Music. That's how I did all of pretty much anything that's currently out now. Um, or most of it. I think the last song I did on my phone was Lunophobia. Everything after that has been done on my computer. But, like, at least in regards to production, like, I taught myself how to do everything. You just kind of figure it out as you go. But, yeah, I used to do everything on GarageBand. This is what it looks like. If you haven't ever used the app before you can also have like the regular piano and it's great it's great if you don't know what the fuck you're doing you're trying to figure it out and then once you figure it out you can kind of come up with a lot of um you know little tricks to make your your stuff really cool but yeah i did it all there and then i did it on my computer it's a lot of synth it's a lot of bells because y'all know y'all know i love my bells yeah sonically it's everything that i would want it to be it's it's a little bit darker everything's for the most part in minor because you know how i do um, yeah, and I don't know, I'm just really freaking excited. Um, the only song that's currently out right now is Bite. That's the, the lead single, and I have another single coming out, actually, on Thursday, January 23rd. So, yay, new single. I thought it'd be cool to kind of do like a little track-by-track track kind of, um, you know, explanation, but I can't play any of the songs, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, y'all are just gonna have to, to wait. So, this is the track list. Um, 13 songs, like I said, and all the songs are just different in every way, and it's great. I freaking love it. Alright, so the first song is the preface. So that's just like the intro to the album, just setting the scene, like what to expect. It's a little bit, like, overwhelming, and it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to feel like it's in your face, and you're like, oh shit, this is a lot. And then as you go through the album, it kind of breaks it down into individual pieces, rather than, you know, once again, throwing everything at your face. So, yeah, it's it's really overbearing. This actually was just, like, one day I was just, like, ranting to myself, and I just wrote everything down. And then I was like, actually, this is perfect. This is exactly what the album is. Like, this sums it up really freaking well. Um... So yeah, that's the preface, and it sounds really intense. I don't know, like, what's the right way to describe it, but I always describe songs as fast whenever they feel like it's just, it's just going, like, it's, it's, like, pumping, it's really intense, and it's, like, almost, almost like a rush. I don't know how to describe it, but that's how I feel when I listen to that song. Okay, the next one is music. So music is a bit, kind of like the same with Bite, where it's a bit more sexual. Um, this one's a lot more intimate and kind of like... If you, if y'all catch my drift, it's just about, like everything that like when you're in love like your partner everything just feels very um everything feels almost orchestral and melodic like everything feels like it fits perfectly and everything is just so so calming and soothing and it's everything's kind of like i don't know just a nice little melody i don't really know how to describe it it's, it's kind of a different feeling when you're in love and you know yeah it's about like the nice euphoric feeling when you're with your partner and when you're with somebody you love and how everything feels like it's just aligning all the chords are like striking correctly striking striking correctly and you know everything's just like working perfectly everything's in perfect harmony so four is your type i freaking love this song this is the last song that actually made it to the album um I wrote this, this wasn't the last song I wrote, but it was the last song I chose to include. So, a lot of this album is also just diving into my own fucking self-awareness and my own insecurities and, like, why the fuck I am the way I am and why do I behave the way I do and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, Your Type is one of those songs I wrote kind of to make myself feel better. I was feeling really insecure, like, I'm not the ideal person that someone would want. I'm not the... You know, people always describe that they have a type and their type is this and their type is that and I'm like, I don't fit any of those characteristics I'm very unique and I'm different and I'm I think I'm freaking awesome but nevertheless I'm not fitting into your type right and it's like essentially just kind of telling myself like you know what I don't owe you anything um it it breaks my heart that I'm not what you want me to be but at the end of the day I don't owe you anything and if this isn't enough then that sucks for you like I can't do anything I know my worth and I know that I'm great in so many aspects it's the only ballad like early on the album which is weird because most of my production is like 
a bunch of shit. It's like drum, synth, like layers and layers and layers of it. This song is just piano, which was really fucking crazy because I'm not that good at piano. Y'all have seen my covers. I'm not that good at piano. The next song is called Lately, which is the single. Yay. It's really that kind of song you want to listen to just like when you're driving and it's dark and you're just like just cruising on the highway. It's that kind of a song. Um, so essentially this song I think for me is the most like lyrically like the one that sticks out to me the most or probably like there's two songs that really do. This song is about just summer 2018. I feel like I was just like doing a bunch of shit just trying to test my limits and and just do a lot of things just for the sake of doing them and seeing if I would feel anything. Cause I, that was at a point where I was feeling very numb and I just, nothing was giving me any type of feeling, whether it was good or bad. Like I was just like completely just mute. And so that summer, I feel like every day I was in an Uber going somewhere else. I was in somebody else's car who was picking me up to go do something. And it was like different people every day. And if anybody who actually knows me in real life knows that's very much not me, I stick with like the same like four or five people or I stay in my room. Like I'm cool with being very introverted to myself and like, you know, being in my closed space. So every day I was doing something different and going out with different people and it was a lot. Like I didn't feel like I was myself. And that was the summer I tried smoking the first time. That was the summer I started drinking for the first time. And, um, like it was just very new to me because I was like, these are not, it's not me at all. And the only reason I was doing these things was to hopefully like feel something or hopefully get some type of reaction or I don't know, just, I wanted to feel like I was alive. Cause at that point I was just so numb and like everything was kind of pointless. Ah, all right. So this next one is called not better than me. And this song kind of stresses me out a little bit. I think, I feel like it was written to the T of what I wanted to say. But it's one of those songs that you write and you feel guilty about because <clears throat> technically speaking and lyrically, the other person is like the, the villain, I'm the victim. But at the end of the day, when I write this and when I listen to it over and over again, I know that I'm the villain in this situation because why would I be mad at somebody else when they didn't owe me anything? So essentially the song's like me kind of just like just chewing out this girl. Like, hey, you might think that you have what you, you want. You might think that you're above me and all this and you're not. And I'll tell you why. And essentially just me like attempting to kind of make her feel like shit. Which is really bad on my part. I really shouldn't do that. When The first time I wrote this, I wrote it just to kind of clear my head. But when I finished, I was like, damn, this feels really sexist. To be fair though... There were like underlying situations that made me actually get mad at this person, but generally speaking, it's like, damn, like this girl technically speaking didn't really, she wasn't really the one who inflicted pain on me, yet every day, at least for a good while, all I could think of was her, all I could think of was her face, like her entire just presence was consuming me. This song's gonna make me sound like a freaking asshole, but that's that's part of it this part of this album is showing the fact that i am not perfect and i am not the greatest person in the world and that i have my faults and a lot of times i am at fault a lot of times i'm also not but being able to actually like acknowledge that express that and be like listen i don't i personally am not always the victim i don't think it's fair to present the to present the work that way because that's not the truth this next one is called <laughs> this next one is called i like attention so this is like i wanted to release this in the summer um, this is kind of one of those, like, ho oh, anthems. It's like, you know what? Like, treat me right and, like, let's go. Let's, let's do what we got to do. And so I was just like, you know what? Um, if you're about it, I'm about it. As long as you don't take it any other type of way. As long as you don't take it as something serious, like, let's go. I'm game. I'm not trying to do anything serious. If you're not trying to do anything serious, then this could work out. But, you know, of course people, you know, think more of the situation and then that's where problems occur. And it's just like a really like fun cute little song and I wrote this song in 10 minutes in my uber on the way to the gym <laughs> so the song was I wrote that shit dumb quick and I was like oh perfect done all I had to do is add the production which I do when I got home and like this song was done like within like two days next one is permanent poison so I've always thought this like this title itself was so cool and I wrote a song on sober called this and it didn't work out and like it just you know whatever it didn't work and I was like, no, this title is so perfect. Like, I need to use this for something. I thought it was so cool. And so I thought about it, and I thought about how it applied to my life at the time. And I was like, perfect. This is a song that's about me just trying to just intoxicate myself and do all these things that I'm not used to. The way I see this song is like, I've only been drunk once. Um, and this was not the time where I was drunk. 
Um, but I think of it as in, like, imagine if you're drunk and you're just, like, an emotional wreck. And you're just like, all right, like, all right, fuck me. All right, give me this. All right, let me smoke that. Like, just doing whatever. And it's like, you're clearly not in the right state of mind. And, you know, sometimes people take advantage of that. Luckily, I was in a situation where people did not take advantage of me or do anything. But generally speaking, it's like, you're not in the right state of mind. You're just doing whatever just to kind of cope. And at the end of the day, it's just like, everything's kind of just, like, numb. Um, and this song is really cool because the production took so fucking long for this song. Like, this was the song that was, like, killing me inside. <laughs> but I kind of thought of a really cool way to make it sound um, like it wasn't me, per se. Because at the end of the day, this isn't my personality. This isn't how I am. Like, all of this was a very out-of-body experience. And I was like, all right, um, let me... So I pitched it up a little bit and added, like, hella auto to it. I wanted that shit to sound like T-Pain. And I was like, all right, like, obviously it's me, but it's a different version of me. So the production itself does play a really big part into, like, the what, the story I'm trying to tell for this song. All right. Ego, Ego, Ego. Ego is my favorite song on the freaking album. Because this song, even now, it's one of those songs that I listen to or, like, I sing and I practice it. And I'm like, damn, I still feel this shit because it's true. And I feel like an asshole every time. Essentially, the song is about... It's not per se about leading someone on, um, but it's about being really self-aware that you're being a bitch and then continuing to do bitch behavior. Of, I laid my boundaries very straight. I explicitly said exactly what it is that I wanted, and if you couldn't, like, if you weren't capable to do that, then that's great. Like, that's perfectly fine. We can continue just keeping things how it is. If you can, that's also great. Like, you know, whatever it is, like, I'm cool with either way. And this person... Um, you know, kept saying that they were fine how everything was, but obviously they wanted something more. And every time that I even felt like I was slightly leading the person on, I was like, whoa, let me back up a little bit. Um, and I did care about this person a lot, but this is also one of those things where it's like, I feel like this kind of only came back up in my life because I was just really lonely and I needed some sort of attention and I needed to feel good about myself and I needed to feel like I was wanted and this was somebody who made me feel like I was wanted and needed constantly checked up on me and like essentially kind of filled the void that I was I was having like well it's over at this point like there's no going back but I don't know it just it, it feels really sucky when you know that you're the reason that someone's probably hurting but the production value on this goes fucking hard normal so normal is a really fucking fun song I tried making it kind of like 70s kind of pop so this is like the poppiest song on the album um so yeah the song is really fun and such but when you listen to the lyrics it's about um like why am i not able to get over all my trauma why am i still like going through these issues why is this still something that's bothering me um you know it's been however long now i feel like i should have been over it and for whatever reason i'm not and maybe that's just something wrong with me the song is just like will i ever be normal am i normal like why is my mind doing these things to something that happens to other people so yeah it's just a lot of just like pent-up trauma and it's like how am I even dealing with it I'm trying my hardest to to move forward and do whatever it is I got to do but for some reason this is still something that's plaguing me all right so number 11 is called the pool and this is actually the song that was supposed to be on sober um uh, and this is my freaking like eighth grade like notebook I vividly like remember writing this song and I was in my eighth grade anatomy class and we were watching, this is like kind of towards like the middle end of the year. So we're watching like all those like 80s and 90s videos about like STDs and chlamydia and, and like shit like that. And I was like, you know what, whatever. And so I wrote the song and this is, I don't know how much you can see of it, but like this is eighth grade, bro. And you know it's supposed to be on sober because I vividly like allude to one of the lines about being sober. Like it was meant to be part of sober. Essentially, the song is about um, not feeling like you can speak, always feeling like you have to kind of dim yourself down because people won't understand, or in my case, sometimes people just won't let you speak. Um, and it's about just like, how, how, how do I cope with it? So because I can't speak, I write. And so it talks about how I use my music to just kind of like, just I guess like push forward and all the people who are involved in my life I fall to a weakness at them because 
I care so much. And then when I actually get in pain, like, they become, like, a muse for me to write about my shit. This next one is cortisol. Um, so cortisol is, like, the chemical that induces stress. <laughs> uh, but this song is, like, just about how I'm always so stressed and I have this impending anxiety. Like, I, can't, I feel like I can't get away from. And it's, like... As much as I try to keep it together and, you know, and maybe on the outside I might look like everything's composed and I have my shit together, but I don't, like, I want, like, half the time I feel like I would better off, I'd be better off maybe not here. You know, just feeling really purposeless and worthless and it's like, I don't deserve to be alive, I don't, like, why am, there are so many other people who are better than me who, who have something they can accomplish and, like, just great souls and great people and they're not here, so why am I, and... You know, I'm a good person. I consider myself to be great in a lot of respects, but there are people who are much more worthy um, than me to be alive who probably wouldn't be in as much pain being alive like I am. And the last song. The last song is called Sex Essential Crisis. When I came up with this title, I was like, girl, you are a genius. Your mind is crazy. And this song is about me feeling like if I had to choose between my career or if I had to choose between, like, you know, like, love and having a family and stuff like that. Like, what would I choose? And I think about it all the time. Like, I don't feel like the lifestyle I want to live will be fair to for me to have kids or anything like that. Like, I ideally want to be touring. I want to be traveling. I want to be doing all this kind of stuff where I'm not going to be, like, stable in one place. And I think it's very unfair for me to assume that whoever my partner may be is going to follow me around or or wait for me wherever they may be. I don't think that's fair to put that on somebody. But it's like, if I were to have kids, I have to do it. I already, when I feel like I've been successful enough or I've done what I wanted to do, I don't want to have kids knowing that I still have more to do and I don't want to like not be able to attend to them. I mean, this isn't really something I have to think about right now. I'm freaking 18. But I just think about it like way in the future. And I wrote this when I was 16, so that's the funnier part. I asked on my Instagram a few days ago, like, all right, let's go. Ask me questions about the album. Let's see what y'all think or what y'all want to know. And I got some cool questions. So the first question, which I thought was, like, the coolest fucking question ever, would album two and Sober be friends? And I think they would. I think they both stem from the same root. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. I think they come from the same place. Um, clearly, um different situations and such but it's just like sober has kind of grown up and evolved into new problems but um i do think they'd be friends sonically i don't think that they're super similar but they're also not too different like they they're like cousins <laughs> they're like cousins and then obviously you have the pool um that song that kind of bridges the two over it's the connection it's the just the overlap so i do think they'd be friends i think most of my disc i think the only part of my discography that wouldn't be friends with any of them is like Venus and maybe for the muses, especially for the muses that does not fit into anything else. Um, and maybe Venus depends how you look at it. But Garden Music, Sober, and Album Two would definitely be friends. Um, yeah, besties. <laughs> the next question was más canciones en español. Eh, no para el disco, pero después en el futuro si acaso yo quisiera hacer un disco completamente en español. And no sé cuándo será eso, pero eso, eso es algo que me interesa hacer. The next question I got. What is the main message, main theme, slash idea? I think the main theme at the end of the day is the comparison between the three things. You're comparing sex, music, and um, self-harm, which are three really big parts of my life. You know, obviously some parts shouldn't be, but nevertheless, that's my life. Let's be real. And all of those things equate to power. And it's like, how do you hone that power? How do you control that? And how do you make yourself feel like you're in control of your life again? And then the same person asked me, also, does it have songs in Spanish? Previous answer, no, not on this album, but in the future I would love to make, um, I would love to make, like, a full album in Spanish. I think that'd be so freaking cool. I am in love with Rosalia, like, in love with her. I would love to do something with her one day, or even, like, Bad Bunny or something. I think that'd be dope as shit, but, yeah, not right now, but in the future. In the meantime, y'all can listen to Con Calma, that's the song I have fully in Spanish, and you can also listen to Vile with the Vengeance, which is, like, little pieces in Spanish, but... <laughs> okay, this is also a really cool question. What colors would you use to describe its sound? So, um, this album is very black, red, purple. Um, the album cover, actually, I'm doing this, and I'm really hoping that when I edit it, like, it'll actually go here. But I also don't really know how to do that, so 
let's just assume it goes here. Okay, cool. Colors described are definitely like purple, black, and red. So the red on the album cover, I shot this cover at the beach, and the red is supposed to symbolize blood. Um, so I wanted to feel like I was just, just sinking or like constantly just bathing in my own problems and I can't really get away from it. And another question I got was, any bangers on the album? Of course, y'all know how the fuck I do. Of course there are bangers. Even though the really like sad songs are bangers. They're like different kinds of bangers. They're not like super like upbeat in your face bangers, but they're still bangers. I realize now that I have not said the name of the album, so I guess it's kind of like best for last. The album is called The Relation Between Unrelated Concepts. Um, so clearly those concepts being sex, music, and self-harm and how they all connect in my life and how they all equally play a part in me trying to re-harness my power. Yeah, so that was very long, but the sober video was also fucking long. I just talk a lot. Um, yay! This is like my work. This has been my work for the last few years and it feels very, it feels very in tune with what I'm trying to do with my sound and like just what I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm very proud of myself, but yeah, I hope y'all listen to it when it actually comes out. If y'all got questions, if y'all, you know, whatever it is, feel free to, I guess, comment, feel free to like DM me, whatever it may be. And yeah, I hope y'all listen. Release date is coming very, very soon. I just don't want to announce anything yet until I'm like 100% sure of logistics, but yay. Okay, cool. Thank you guys for watching and listening because I know this shit was long as fuck. Um, 